G'day everyone, I'm just taking a bit of a breather here while we're out on this trap line. It's been a long day already, got one dog hanging on the front. Um, I've just hit a bit of reception, so as usual, beep, 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 in comes, you know, a hundred messages. And a lot of it's to do with some of the clips that I've been putting on lately on McGee's Mad Monday and the trapping clips and you name it, Throwback Thursday. Thank you all for your support. But some of the comments coming in there that I see from some of the chat pages and that, yeah, that I don't really frequent, but people pass them on. And there's guys there saying, McGee doesn't know what he's talking about. Hunting is okay. We can, we've got permission from our landowner. Ra Ra doesn't know what he's talking about. Okay, fair enough. Maybe I don't. Okay. There will be people, and there's plenty of people out there that have got good relationships with their landowners. The landowner trusts them not to do something stupid and probably they haven't looked at their insurance okay i'm on a landowner's property here now where he has looked at his insurance that landowner this landowner here is actually allocated 10 grand to upgrade all his oh and s on his property because he can see that if he doesn't he could be caught out there's something happens and one of these ambulance chaser lawyers and that's what happens everybody with a smartphone or watching youtube or whatever will see ads popping up there have you been hurt at work have you been in an accident um no win no pay we will you know we'll pursue them we'll get your money for it so there's these these sharks and that's what they are these ambulance chaser lawyers who will find somebody that's been hurt i'll say Let's go and find somebody negligent and get as much money out of them as we can. That's basically the way it's working. The world has changed, people. What used to be a handshake and that was it, it's no more, okay? But people will continue to hunt and they'll do it under pest control and whatever. Groups like ours, like the Ridge Group, uh, and businesses like my own, Australian Wild Country Adventures, right? We've been running our ballot, our red deer ballot now for 25 years. That's given over 2,000 hunters the opportunity to come to Queensland and hunt for a trophy stag. All legit, all above board, right? And it's worked very, very well. And there's dollars have flowed back to the landowners for this. So the landowners see the deer on their country as a renewable resource and they want them sustainably managed so they're there for the future you right dude what's wrong okay, stuck um so the deer themselves are seen as an asset now i've had this sort of uh conversation argument and whatever with a lot of people from game council over the years the game licensing unit i've worked very closely with a lot of them but they, they have put the value in the hunter themselves and not in the primary pro product, which is the deer. Okay, that's the renewable asset. That's the thing that takes water, takes grass, sunlight, dirt, and reproduces and gives you another crop the next year. Okay, so it is a renewable primary product. They haven't put the value in that at all. They put it in the secondary side of it, which is the hunter, right? Now, one of the left-wing politicians that I faced off a while back, he says, we don't care if hunting disappears. He said, we didn't, do not care. And I said, but what about all the money that it brings in? He said, we don't care. He said, you're not going to put your money under the bed. When you're not going to put it in a shoebox and put it away. We still get your money. You'll go fishing, you'll go and play golf, you'll you'll buy a new car, you'll buy a motorbike, whatever. He said, that money that you spend on hunting, if you can't hunt, we'll still get it. You'll spend it on something else. Now, right now I hear people yelling out there, no, 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 this isn't the way it works. Sorry, this is the way they see it. I'm not saying they're right, but that's the way the left, the woke mob sees it. They feel that if hunting disappears, you'll go somewhere else and do something else. Right? and you'll spend your money. A lot of it, if you want to go hunting, you'll go and spend your money overseas. So we miss out. Plenty of arguments, and I'm right behind people on those arguments there. I think these left-wing side people, uh, the woke mob, are crazy. 
right. But the fact is, they are willing to throw us under the bus. Now, anybody that's had a look at the elections coming up in New South Wales, it's possible that the Greens will soon take the balance of power away from the Shooters and Fishers Party, Shooters, Fishers and Farmers. Look out. That's all I can say. Look out. If the Greens take power down there, one of the first things they say they'll do is ban hunting and fishing. Look it up yourself. This is what they are proposing. Right. So this will be the test of it. To me, we should be putting the value in the animal as something that reproduces, that takes basic air, water, dirt, grass, browse, and produces another product that we can harvest. Now, I know an old mate of mine, old Shinger, he'll be watching this. Ah, don't use the word harvest. Okay, we won't use the harvest as what we do. We're hunters. But the commodity itself gives us a harvest, a harvest of fruit that we can pluck off that tree. When you get a mob of deer or, or goats, whatever, that reproduces, if you keep them at a sustainable level, and you manage them properly, they give you an annual harvest that you can then take and consume. That's the essence of sustainable use management. A lot of people are forgetting that. They're not seeing it. So yeah, hunting might go on, but what you're doing is you're killing the asset. And very soon, if the deer are seen as totally worthless, the best way for a landowner to make money out of those deer then on his or her property will be to kill them all and run more sheep or cattle. Okay? Unfortunately, that is the scenario we face. Already we've got landowners in the Chittle Deer country up north who have removed tens of thousands of Chittle Deer off their properties. And all of a sudden they're running hundreds and hundreds more cattle. And at the price of cattle at the moment, we can't come anywhere near that. So it makes good sense to remove them. If you're a cattleman or a sheep farmer, remove them, run more stock. And us as hunters are too blind, too, no, no, too pig-headed to pull up and see that this is what's facing us. So that's what I'm trying to say. I'm trying to just put the message out there. Guys and gals, if we do not start pushing sustainable use management, we're going to lose it all.